Good evening, puny earthlings, and welcome to Nine and Out, a Team Fortress 2 showcast. It is I, Vegeta, Prince of All Saiyans. Tonight's show is hosted by Kyo Cop, Kurilip, Boots, and Dijin Boo. Our special guests tonight are R1 Key and 302 Redirect. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, welcome to Nine and Out. Uh, my name is Cold, and uh, hosted tonight we have uh, Turbo Cop and uh, DJ. Unfortunately, uh, two of our other casters are out. Um, Kip is currently under house arrest by the state of uh, Missouri, and Getaway, I believe, is uh, spelunking in the ocean looking for a large sea mammal. As I explained last night. And uh, yes, our, our special guest tonight is uh, Mr. Uh, 404 from um, Electric Temptations. Welcome. Hi. And um, and we were supposed to have Ricky here, but unfortunately, he there were some audio problems with his mic, and there was kind of a whistling sound coming through. So we just decided it would be better for the cast to just uh, yeah, just have him off the call. And uh, we so I gave him the big old boot. But uh, anyways, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I just got home from work and uh, stitched this cast together. So sorry for my silly attire. Uh, Turbocar, please uh, kick this thing sure. off. So we are gonna have our uh, week. 10 week uh week uh recap recap uh for this week but first of all we got to give a big old shout out to tip the hats earning a hundred thousand dollars for charity uh this weekend in the space of about a third the amount of hours uh like 30 hours so that makes like what three thousand dollars an hour i can't do math on stream math, math yeah. on stream is terrible is that about it's a right? lot it's a lot it's yeah. nice it's a lot of money it's good so Congrats to everyone out there. Lang, DJ Wheat, uh, Star and Germa, Sean Bud, uh, Get a Whale especially. Good job, buddy. Uh, truck Truck as well. Um, who am I missing? I'm, I know I'm missing someone. Oh, everyone on ET for the show match against Ty Pander. Uh, that was a good. That was a good game, even though latency was a big part of it. Mm -hmm. it wasn't really a whole team. Oh yeah, who was missing? I, I forgot. Was Evil not there? A lot of people were missing. Actually, they were. They actually made like a. a a pug team because they thought we weren't going to make it and we kind of did. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. That was crazy. Um, anyways, week nine, uh, recap for the week. Uh, if you caught the game casted by cold and Frank West last night, it was MTS versus ET. And you guys, unfortunately got five, three at the, uh, end of the second half there. Uh, so you'll have yeah. to face murder force mm -hmm. two days from today. Is that like, is that like a lot of pressure? You've got to play like two matches in about five days. Um, I'd say, yeah, it's a lot of pressure. I feel like goalie's not one of our strongest maps in the entire universe. We can definitely tell playing against MTS. That's true. Would you rather they uh, they had you play a different map for the loser's bracket game um, than having you do a goalie wash twice? Um, that'd be a lot of different maps, but I I would like a map that we've played during the season for, like, on, for the lower bracket. It would really help out just in case if like one of our maps was bad and we get knocked into the lower bracket and we play a different map that we're good at, you know? Yeah, that would be cool. Anyways, uh, I'm going to finish up going through the stats for the week. Uh, GC barely takes it out against DRS 5-4. I have to go. I've got the replay for that, so I'll know exactly the details of how that came about. But suffice to say, it was probably a close game there. And uh, UBS got, gets knocked out uh, by PsyOps. DK gets knocked out by, by Murder Force. So now we've got Murder Force versus ET two days from now and uh, DRS versus PsyOps uh, two days from now. And how do you think those two games are going to shape out with uh Well, how do you think the DRS game is going to shape out? Um, DRS, PsyOps. I think DRS is going to win. Psyops DRS does have the momentum. Yeah, PsyOps hasn't been looking too great this season just because they have a lot of Sixes players and like they don't really know some like Highlander maps, but Goalie Wash might give them slide advantage so like i expect a close game like probably five three around there yeah i think someone should cast that game someone yeah. out there for sure um uh, yeah what's up teach uh before we move on to anything else i just want to remind everyone every podcast <laughs> every podcast uh i am paying attention to the chat we do a question and answer section at the end of every podcast make sure if you have a question that you think of put it in the chat i'll take i'll take it down and we'll answer them at the end of the show uh, any questions for the casters or for the guests? Just leave them there, and I'll pick them up. Great, that is a that is a perfect gift of a whale cold, as a, as I just noticed right now. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. Yeah, well, that's that's my buddy in his natural form. <laughs> it is. 
That when he's achieved he his true like. form. His, uh, his super form? Yeah. Reminds me of pure. I didn't... I didn't watch any Dragon Ball Cold. I have to admit, I'm totally in the dark about all. That's of it. that's fine. That's fine. Not everybody watched DBZ, <laughs> wow. so. So lame. Yeah, I kind of recognized it was Vegeta <laughs> right when you were doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sick. Okay. So, um, four or four, you should talk about how you got onto to ET and how it went from there. Even though you played for DK, your history with the team is a little bit uh, older than that. Um, season nine, I think it was me and Argo and Faze and somebody else. I don't know somebody else. We kind of like met up, and I think all of our teams died at the time, so we just kind of made a platinum team. I think it was, oh, it was, it was, tooth the toothbrushies. I don't remember. It. Roth was on the team. Roth was with the us too. Yeah, That's I think they name. they won gold at the time or silver. I don't think gold was there. But like we kind of made our team, and that was made the Kimberlite Council, which was our original name of Electric Temptations. So, yeah. Okay, and then from there, uh, you guys got signed up by AG. Uh, but you told me beforehand you don't you don't really know what happened there. Um, I kind of after after Kimberlite Council, I didn't. I kind of like left I guess I didn't I don't know I just didn't want to play medic again cuz medic is very frustrating and platinum so I went to DK for one of those seasons and I played spy and then Kozen was filling in for me and then I came back and played medic again I kind of not necessarily kicked Kozen off the spot but I took it back and then Kozen went to GC and then a whole bunch of different roster changes from the time I was there by the time I was back, and it, it's a completely different team than it was season nine. Sure, you guys picked up a lot of people. Uh, as, as I was looking through the roster changes here, now correct me when I get it wrong. Uh, for the fall season last season, you got Ricky. Is that right? Three eight special. Mm -hmm. uh, Deer was a pickup as well. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, talk about talk about those players. Have they been well? Obviously, they've been quite. Oh, they've all been pretty amazing uh, this season, but it didn't look so hot there at the beginning of last season. Um, Deer is, plays a lot of TF2, like, every day. He stays up till, like, 7 a.m., and he doesn't wake up till 5 p.m. It, it's crazy. Um, 38, he was an old invite demo. I don't know exactly what teams he was on, but he's a really old player, played the game for a long time, too. Uh, Ricky, same, same person, he was old invite, kind of picked him up. Plays in main now. Oh, cool. wow. And uh, this season, uh, the two ones I know you picked up uh, were Evil, or do, do people say Evil or Evil? Evil. Evil. The, the, he, the second I is silent. Oh, okay. Of course. <laughs> and uh, and VFL Satan, that one's easy. Yeah. Um, how do you guys come across, across Satan there? Um, I don't think I was the one who asked him. I think that was Argo taking care of that. I don't know. I think... I don't know if this is true, but I think Satan wanted a better team, so from Wonderful, but he still right. wears he wears, still wears the tag. He still every, wears the tag, which gets me yeah. like every game. <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh, Legions is okay. <laughs> um, so okay, so for those who don't know what what Argo actually does, uh, maybe you should tell uh, the viewers out there. He can. <laughs> we call him our team manager. We are like <laughs> the only team Highlander team ever to have like a manager. Um, he used to play engineer back in season nine, our first season. Then he was just <laughs> we'll make fun of Argo. He he's not very good at the game, so we kind of <laughs> cut him. I guess is a way to put it. And then he's just there to manage everything. He schedules everything. He like gets people to ring if we need somebody. I love Argo. Yeah, no, Ar Argo is great. I think I don't think he would he would uh, begrudge you for like publicly saying yeah. Ar <laughs> Argo shit. <laughs> That wouldn't be. Oh. I don't think that would that would be the way. Well, I mean, he would probably like message you back, be like, "Yeah, you're right. This is probably true." <laughs> yeah. Oh. He knows. He knows. He's. <laughs> he knows his place. <laughs> yeah, that's a uh, really cool. He's a he's a great guy. Uh, shout outs, shout outs to Argo for that. Um, anyone else that we haven't talked about uh, on the team that's really stepped up for you guys? Because you guys, well, you're basically undefeated, um, except for very recent uh, mm -hmm. events. Um, Faze is, I, Faze has definitely stepped up his game. Um, I don't, I don't 
remember last season. I wasn't really following the team last season, but I but from the last season to this season, he's definitely gotten a lot better. And yeah. uh Faze is definitely like Marissa level. Like the game last night was really mm-hmm. good. And then Decimate was another pickup. We forgot about him. Um he's really good. And well, placing Kill 'em all, but Kill 'em all moved the heavy. So Was Kill 'em yeah. all originally yeah. a scout? Yeah, he okay. was originally the scout. And what is yeah. what does Kill 'em all think about uh, playing heavy now? Um he thinks it's easy. Yeah. This is, uh, he well, that's doesn't... probably good, right? He doesn't give his opinion too much, so okay. He saved the he saved the game yesterday. Um, if you watched the game yesterday, there was a, a like a doom push coming with no Uber from from MTS, and then he sits on the point and gets like a six k or something ridiculous like that on uh, the last point. Yeah, that was a that was really cool, and the, one of the very few times you get to to feature a heavy on a cast, mm-hmm. which is really nice. Um, yeah, I guess we should just talk about that game a little bit since. No, it's kind of a it's kind of a downbeat right now to like what was looking to be a perfect season there. Yeah, it, it we were really like n- not necessarily angry, but like I don't know the word to put it. We were we weren't ha- that happy that we lost because how close it was. Yeah, I usually send Argo like a GG or something like that, and he usually responds back in about a minute. He didn't he didn't respond back last night at all, so I, I knew. Things were not things were not not happy for a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they he had told me that you guys uh, had been practicing as much. I mean, he, he kind of fibbed that to me. Is that true? Um, it, it's it's been like this all season. We never have a full roster for like any scrims. Like we're always missing at least somebody important. Like thirty A is the person referring to. Like he, he's he's not there for some scrims. And like whenever we do scrim, it's just not fun because we don't have anybody, have everybody. Like our scrim on Sunday, before the match two days ago, we had to have five ringers for both of our scrims. Ouch. So it and it, we kind of we kind of got rolled during that scrim. And like having a full roster for any scrim is really helpful for your match because you know how everybody plays. So and that's we a. Had that. That's something we can touch on here. So I, every every team level definitely has scrims where you don't have the full roster. And like in your opinion, how like disrupt, disruptive is that to practice? If like you're just even just missing one person, so you have eight of your mains, and then you have to put in put in one sub. Is that still? Are you still like getting like eighty percent or ninety percent of practice in, or is it just like not even worthwhile? It's certain classes that really affect everything, from how we've seen it is if our if our demo isn't there it, it's really negatively affecting us and if our scout or soldier because that's our flank isn't there it's somebody different we usually like lose our flank a lot and all that and, and like losing our spy like deer if deer's not there it won't be that bad because all spies are the same and like we don't really tell deer what to do he just kind of does stuff oh yeah so like somebody that like really like we our combo plays around it really affects everything. Okay, so... So, uh, base, so then, f- if it's... Depending on the certain classes, like... Uh, is it enough incentive to remove someone from the team if they're not showing up all of the time, but they're still getting their practice in? Like, if they're practicing however they get their practice in, is that enough, or is that incentive enough to give them the boot? I don't think we would... Since we're so far into the season right yeah. now, I don't think we would yeah. ever like cut anybody. But it's it's still really frustrating when they're not there. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We, I think, whenever we got thirty eight, we were still having the same problem. So we've been having the same problem for like a few seasons, especially with thirty eight. Yeah. So I don't think we would ever cut them. Well, that uh, okay. that that brings brings up a question in my mind about, or I guess a subject when I hear about people talking about whether the uh, roster size when the admins or players are asking for an increase or decrease of players some people say well if you decrease the roster size it'll it'll give players the incentive to form another team and if it's too big the the backup size is too big and the players you know the the team the size of number of teams shrinks um you know you have uh, quite quite a full roster and and yet are still having trouble getting people to make scrims what's your opinion on what the size of a roster should be, and 
and some I've heard I've heard a, a couple of people say like, well, you have backups there for a reason. Like if, if you, they can't make scrims or they can't make matches, then make room for yeah. someone else that wants to play. Um, I I know from our team, our ringers aren't really our players on our roster. Our mm-hmm. roster basically tells who we're gonna put in a match. Yeah, it's like we're we're restricted to those people, but mm-hmm. we don't. I know we don't ever use those people like in scrims. I know that for a fact. So, okay. I guess I guess the roster size doesn't really matter unless it gets to the point of just putting people on there for like a roster I mean, what are they, I don't know what they're called. So you're saying that's just, just, just there for the metal. You're saying those people are more more dependable. Rider. Yeah. <laughs> they're more dependable if you need them for um, a match, but uh, for for people that uh, help you in scrims, you just have like a general pool of friends that mm-hmm. will will jump in and okay, I understand. Yeah, okay. I know that's more? specific to it. our team. That's specific okay. to our team because like I know GC get people that are invite, but we get people that are like friends with us to play in scrims. So like it's more important for us to get people in from our like lineup in scrims. Because the people we get to ring aren't as good as them. Okay, well, um, so I guess that brings up a, another good question here, uh, which just completely skipped my mind for a moment. Sorry. Um, I was gonna ask, I was gonna segue into asking you about the view. Oh yeah, the, the prize pool. So prize pool is sitting at three at three thousand dollars right now. Um, it might hit three thirty five hundred um, by the end of the season. Uh, although maybe not. Depends on what the admins decide to do. Mm-hmm. Um. How he so there was a big discussion going on today and yesterday on the forums as to how they're going to split the prize pool. Uh, the you can still donate by the way uh, over on the GoFundMe page, which I'll link over to right now. Uh, they'll close out the fundraiser uh, May first, and then they'll start uh, giving out the money. Uh, but they're not going through teams; they're going to go through individual players, uh, uh, individual players' uh, PayPal accounts. So. They're not giving it to the leaders to, to to distribute. They're giving it to individuals, and it looks like they're going to try and just split it straight up nine ways. But that's not. I don't know. Would you agree with that? That it's just good to just give the top nine mains of the of the top teams the money, or should it go to other people as well? I think it should be the top nine, like main people on the roster, yeah. because if you try and spread that out too much, people aren't going to get a lot of money. It's going to it's going to be spread too thin. And uh, as far as the future uh, of of you and UG- in professional Highlander and uh, UGC as well, uh, where do you see yourself being in uh, uh, five to nine months? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I I I couldn't tell you where I would be. I don't know because I'm I'm obviously kind of young, so I'm gonna be starting college very soon. So I don't know. How old are you? But, are you are you eighteen? No, I'm sixteen. You're 16. You're starting yeah. college. Wow. Well, soon. I'm a junior. Right. Yeah. Oh, you're a junior. Yeah. Okay. Did you just get your license? There, are, we've had a lot of 16 year olds on this show. I I know. And, and most of them didn't have their license, which which like shocked me. I've had it for a few months now. Got okay. in December. Yeah. Don't crash your car. <laughs> Thank you for the advice. Great advice. Great advice. <laughs> Um, he knows how to juke as a medic. I think he knows how to drive a car. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, that's true. It's it's exactly the same. You have to you have to ride the rockets, right? Yeah. Oh, there was one brilliant surf I saw you do um, right next to the rock uh, when you were approaching second point. Um, I think it was last night. Yeah, last night. Yeah, the yeah. enemy uh, enemy soldier bombed in, and you're like, oh, jeez, and jumped and yeah. like just totally surfed out of the way and hid behind the rock. And I was like, oh, I'm so glad I got that in camera. Yeah, it was great. It was, it was wonderful. Was... There was a lot of great plays. I was certain I was gonna die there because like we were going up in the same direction. Mm-hmm. So usually when that happens, he can airshot you easily. So I was afraid of dying. I thought the airshot was coming and he missed. Yeah, yeah. It was just like mm-hmm. wow, it's, boy, you lucked out. Too. But yeah. <laughs> there was a uh, there was one play last night that I I bet I was just I felt so bad for you where you guys had successfully defended last and you come out to second. Um, it's just you and the demo man for some reason though, and the demo man makes a play towards big door, but. MTS's soldier is already in the air, air sailing to you, yeah. and you're, you're mm-hmm. able to get back in the door, but he gets a rocket on you, pops you straight up in the air, closes the door, comes back into the door and opens it, and mm-hmm. then hits you again. 
like I remember that that was yeah. near the end was, of the match yeah that was yeah. that was tough to tough to see uh, that was our, really bad just because of how goalie wash works that map is so hard to push out of last um it's basically that map is basically a, a mid fight and last point mm -hmm. map you mm -hmm. never see i mean like you may see stalemates but that's all you'll see on second mm. so like pushing out is just incredibly hard i know we're we're bad at that cuz like we're so scared of getting back capped so we always have like a few people staying back and only have like two people pushing forward and it was usually like me and 38 more importantly though like how mad are you that there's no april fools update today in tf land <laughs> i'm like i'm so mad about that i didn't really play tf2 update. today so Whoa. Oh. april fools i'm not i'm, I'm april. not that upset <laughs> okay april fools <laughs> April Fools don't care about TF2 today. <laughs> Do you have a mic you can yeah. drop? That'd be great. That'd be, yeah. Okay. Uh, what else is going on? Oh, let's let's pull let's pull up uh let's pull up the map. Cold. That'd be cool. All right. Cool. Cool. So um, this is something uh, I've personally been working on uh, with Froggy. So Froggy is the best mapper who ever mapped uh, and ever lived, and he put together this map we've been talking for a couple weeks and i was like well it'd be cool if there's a map that kind of looked like this and then i drew him a napkin photo and then he came up with this uh for for me in the past couple of days and i'm super excited about it it looks pretty good already even though there are some flaws um so i gave everyone the map ahead of time dg you don't have the map do you i gotta give you the map is that right i think i'm looking at blue spawn right now maybe you maybe. spawn in the point you spawn on the midpoint so because it's not, there's no health packs or spawn points or doors or anything set up. This now. is a cough map and you spawn on mid? Well, what sorcery is this? That's true. <laughs> well, we thought it would be really fun if everyone spawned right on the point together. And then it could be a really exciting, <laughs> engaging cough. You, there's, no, there's no walkout, so. <laughs> um, that, that, that's very interesting. I'll say that is very interesting. I'd like to see how that plays out because, uh, yeah, that, that, could be, that could be fun and intense. Mm, dev texture. Yeah, dev textures everywhere. Um, so the basic rule of this map is uh, top to bottom, uh, diagonal spawn zones from each other. Um, although we need some way to protect the point, uh, the the spawn rooms from seeing each other. That's why there's a big old bar over the middle right now. And right now the the midpoint only has like one or two exits from it. Otherwise, you're kind of stuck if you're not a jumping class, uh, which is kind of an interesting role I thought. Uh, and you've got a really big staging area uh, in the middle. Uh, with all that cover around it, um, right, uh, basically on the second tier level. Um, so if you're excited or interested in like trying to do a de new developer map, um, give me a, a ring. Uh, I'm looking for teams right now. Um, we'll do we'll do nine. I just want team on team screens for the, uh, for the moment. Cool. Um, and I've got a big I got a big questionnaire for you to fill out. You can air out your grievances, and uh, me and Frog will be working together uh, to try and put together a better and more competitive map eventually so oh the name um the name right now that i'm staring that i'm sitting on is uh smoke ridge i think cost smoke ridge is a good name smoke ridge cool smoke ridge yeah but anyways that's a little announcement uh over on my end let's go to uh, a real map now are we gonna go to next week's map yeah we should go to, to next week's map what map is that again what bad map water. is that again bad water bad right water, water. Mm -hmm. yep even though you guys water, have to right. think about goalie wash for the next few days, um, for or would you indulge us um, and cover uh, a little bit of bad water for us? Um, let me open it real quick. Hold on, hold on a sure. second. <laughs> I assume you just have TF2 open um, 100 percent, 24 seven all the time. But... Uh, that's what people would think. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to start? Like attacking or defending? Uh, let's Both. start with let's start with let's just go through it point by point, uh, and we'll do attacking first and then defending, right? Mm -hmm. So we won't have to have cold zip around the whole map all the time. Okay. So first point, uh, what's it like? What what what's going through your mind? Tell us a story that happens every time you play Badwater when you're going into it as an attacker. What are you thinking? I always think of it. I always think of it like upward. You always, when you're attacking, you always want to suicide first when you're attacking. You leave your medic and spawn, have everybody suicide, try and get the sentry or force the uber. Usually when you do one of those two, you can win that point a lot easier than 
just pushing straight out. Son of a gun, there is an update. Oh, there is an update right now? <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. TF2 like just up and quit on me, and it's like, oh, hey, guess what? There's an update. You want to launch it or download the update? No. I wanna That's launch cray. Now. That's so crazy. I thought there was no, I thought there was no oh, way they're no. going to have an update on, on April 1st. They usually don't have it. That, that is the joke. Do you have Most Valve the on the other phone? He's no. like, hey, uh, Crash Cult's computer right yeah. now. Do it. Yeah, yeah exactly. He's loading, he's oh, okay. loading up the I've map. Got, uh, <laughs> I've got show notes. I've, I've got update notes over here. Improved backpack UI. Perfect. Oh, yay. That's exactly what needed right now. Awesome. Added oh, trade 82 trading. and 83. Yes. Uh, let's see. Updated equip regions for humanitarian Hachimaki, the specialized, the blazing bull, the master's yellow belt, the lucky shot, and the deadliest duckling. Great. Oh, updated the gunboats so they can be used in medieval mode. <laughs> Great. Wait, what? what? Gunboats can be used in me medieval mode. Do you think that's that's a cool thing you want to do? Because uh, that'll reduce rocket blast when I'm, you're playing I'm glad medieval. you can rocket jump in that mode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. What the crap? Uh, okay. Wrangler can have strange things, strange parts applied to it. Yay. That's a cool thing. Uh, literally nothing important. Literally April Fools! <laughs> we made you wait all day for this cool new update, and there's barely cool things with it. I don't know. I didn't yeah, I, th I think we like, just been had with the whole gunboats yeah. on medieval mode. Yeah, oh, there you go. That is the joke. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yay, new backpack UI, everybody! Everything you've been waiting for! Oh, this one's... This one's slightly related. Uh, fix spies speaking the payload cart forward and backward response rule lines while disguised. Awesome. So they get on the cart, they'll then say their spy line <laughs> for everyone to hear. I've never noticed that before. Yeah, it's a dead giveaway for spies, especially cloak and dagger spies, where I hear, um, you know, if they're disguised as scat eyes, and like, yay, the cart's not moving or something like that. And you're like, whip around, you're like, what? That was right by me. And you start spy checking. Just ruins it for the spy. <laughs> I is that I've that. never to hear that before. Uh -huh, yeah, That's it, crazy. Yeah, it happens. Oh, wow. Okay, so we're finally back into Badwater. That was a quick update, actually. It must have not been that big. So I'm I'm looking at uh, blue right now from Red's yeah. perspective. We're looking from the left hand rock side, uh, the classic the classic viewport of a, mm -hmm. a classic map. I think it might be the oldest competitive map. No, it could be, no, be no, Grand Arena or Badlands. Badlands. But yeah. nobody plays yeah. Red. Granary anymore. I don't think Granary's ever coming back. Hydro is pretty cool. That's true. Hydro could be the oldest competitive map. I like that map. <laughs> or Well. On Xbox. Well's pretty old. <laughs> oh god. Okay. Uh, so. Yeah. So um, everyone bombs out. Um, it seems like the bombs aren't working as well recently, or at least last season at the platinum level, a lot of people were able to stop. If you just bombed a demo man immediately, a lot of people are able to stop it. Uh, yeah, I I've see I see a lot nowadays. People just like try and walk up. Like I see the demo walking through tunnel, like underneath them and spam up, trying to get the sentry and force them. Because like people can just the sniper can like body shot the demo in midair or heavy can just deny the demo. So like people just rather walk instead of going midair when they're okay. sighting. And then every single medic in the history of medic dumb, uh, when they do need to come out eventually, they walk around the left-hand side cliff and try and sneak up onto the the sentry platform. Um, uh, yes. That's how I've always seen it happen. That's definitely what we're gonna do. Like we're gonna go far left, like walk up that little ramp stuff, try and push from there. Um, if we have, even even if we don't have uber advantage, or if we do or don't, we're just gonna push that way anyways. Um. It's easily counterable by a pyro. If they uber the pyro, you're basically going to do nothing with that uber. Unless you kill their pyro. Yeah, so. because they can push you down to a lower level like pretty mm -hmm. easily. Yeah. yeah. This is a really figured out map, I, I want to say. Yeah, like people, a lot of people, people know, know what's going on when you play this. Yeah. So like uh, so making a new strat isn't that viable. You kind of have to do things that have been done before. Yeah, so would you say like Winning this map is simply just a matter of, of execution. Yes, it is. Unless your sniper goes big. You're cutting out there. Sorry, you cut out there a little bit. Oh uh, yes, I, I say it would. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, first point's kind of boring, isn't it? It's uh, seems pretty figured. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, for what? what? Every first point of every payload map is boring. 
That's true. Because every uh, team Alberta's gives it up exciting. easily. I thought Borneo was all right. Borneo was all right. There's yeah. a little bit of suspense on, you know, where if the sniper is able to make it around in time to get, you know, a full body charged body shot on the medic or something before a red team finally pulls out. Uh, on, on average, most teams would rather get up, give up first and hold second. I'd say. Well, I usually don't see that with Badwater. It's, uh, it, they, they try and, uh, you know, fence a really good hold on first, and if that doesn't work out, usually because of spawn times, that I don't, I usually don't see holds on second point. Yeah, on platinum, anyways. They just yeah, just move back anymore. and start building on third. Yeah, and I think teams should definitely make sure they have their combo at least stay alive for second, because if the other team's aggressive enough, if they wipe you on first, you won't even be able to hold second, because there's only one door to to the second point, so. They can just spawn camp that, and you should win it automatically. That's true. Do you think they? Do you think they should change the second point? Um, just simply because I, I haven't ever seen anyone, in a long time, be able to hold the second point like any much longer than the first point. Whereas like um, with upward, a second point hold won't win you the game, but it will definitely buy you time. I think it's like one of those. I, I don't know. Like they could make another pathway out of red spawn, or yeah, red spawn out to the second point. But I don't know. It might be like one of those changes where, like, if you change it, red team definitely has a greater advantage than the blue. That's true. It's like it's either gonna go the one side or the other, and like there's no way you can even it out. Like if Gabe Newell came to you and he was all like, "We have all this data, and it says that that red team is underutilizing the B point a lot. We want you to change it. What do you like punch a hole into so that red team can go faster, or do you like shorten the back area um, a little bit? Because man, soldiers have a ton of space in the back they can play with." Yeah, I'd, uh, I space. I couldn't tell you what they would change to make this point. Well, if the, if the red team does get on roof, they can actually hold that really well. It's just a matter of how the first point goes. Okay. All right, third point uh, kind of got figured out. Um, I would say fairly recently um, with the sentry gun in the window. Um, that wasn't being done like a year and a half ago. It is now though. Every every team does it. Um. Right. Yeah. Well, teams. We, during the show match, we played bad water, and they kind of held third against us. Like we couldn't push through third, because uh, if if the defending team has uber advantage the whole time, third will never be taken. So I mean, and your sniper pick brings a great play on, or, wow, so the horribly um, the sniper can do a lot on third when you're defending, and attacking. Well, sniper can do a lot any time at any point sure where would you uh where would you like where would be the optimal place for phase to snipe from uh, both offense and defense on third point um on defense probably like back underneath the overhang like where the shadow is so i can like because we're gonna be probably standing right around that corner and so i can like kill him over and over and over and then attacking would be like the flank if you're if you're looking attacking side it would be on the far left sniping because that's a huge sight line from way yeah. from that side to basically where the other snipers should be so you can see the, the the concrete cylinders or whatever those things are yes yeah yeah that area. okay um and then a sentry gun in the window for a perfect defense uh you don't ever push aggressive you always pop defensively on third right you never pop aggressively and when you're on defense um on third definitely you should yeah, you should definitely pop defensively. You don't want to go aggressively on that because you just yeah. they get destroyed if you go into them. If they can cut you real easily. And the other thing that's always like stuck out to me about about the third point is how long of like a walk it is for the offense to get up to the relevant fighting zone. Uh, um, yeah, to... destroying teleporters is really important for like the spy to do. Yeah. Um. Anything else you want to add uh, to this point? Um. Not really. Just make sure your medic doesn't die. Yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, sure that's a good rule of thumb yeah. in general. Make sure your medic and demo don't ever die. If they get zero deaths, you better win that round. True. That would be that would be really hard to lose, though, if you didn't lose a demo ever, and he literally just loaded stickies and kept shooting them mm -hmm. like the entire round. You would have, like, I don't know, like 300 more DPM than the other demo. Something like yeah. ridiculous like that. <laughs> It'd be absurd. Okay, so uh, last point. Um, 
Last point is weird, and I've never figured it out, and I have a hard, really hard time casting it, actually. I mean, it's easy to watch everything go out, but I just never know when momentum is in what team's favor. Um, it, it, it just goes back to uber advantages. Like, if, if the, the attacking team has uber advantage, they can win the last point real, really easily. But if the red team has an uber advantage, like, there's no way the blue's going to be able to take it. So like if you're if you're even you're gonna have to force them. Usually on like there's this huge ramp going up to the third point and going down towards the last. Mm -hmm. Usually you just hold your combo there and the medics usually like on that ramp area. We have a soldier jump them, like jump them real easily just around that corner, force them. But I don't know I don't know how other teams do it in lower divisions. Like they may hold underneath the overhang thing, like right above the last point or I don't know I don't know what sort of hold mm -hmm. on that ramp. Not well, it. what are what are you guys what are you guys doing uh, differently that like makes it better? What are you gonna have that's gonna be your edge in this in this match? Um, I we haven't really talked about it yet, but I would expect Phase doing a lot and Decimate and Ricky on the flank doing a lot. And I don't like in thirty eight is because I thirty eight really knows payload maps, so I'm certain he's gonna do really well with Ubers, like pushing into them or like backing out really easily. Okay. Would, you, would you ever say that um, crits is a viable option for pushing in the last, uh, maybe like a last desperation play? Say maybe there's like less than two minutes left and you're kind of having a hard time breaking up the uber advantages? Um, from what I've seen, it's usually not the attacking team that uses crits, it's the defending team on last mm -hmm. that uses crits. Okay. Because you can spam them really easily going up that ramp because there's not really anywhere their combo can go. Yeah. But I... I would I would probably use quick fix other than crits pushing the last. Days. Really? Why why really? quick fix? Um. Well, you kind of need to be, unless your demo is amazing, you should use crits. But I really wouldn't. You have kind know. of an amazing demo. I mean, he's pretty good. And well, he's really good at Highlander. I just look at the I, stats I, I, and the plays, and just really good player. I'm probably a little biased because I personally don't like using crits just because of like the unpredictable part of it you don't know what's going to happen if you if you don't hit your stickies you're not going to win if you hit your stickies you win but that's true i just don't like that that part of that high risk high reward yeah mm. i've always i'm i'm basically an uber medic i would prefer uber over crits any day all right, so uh, two more things for me real quick. Uh, the first one is, um, what would you look for for like a, an average time uh, uh, of attacking on Badwater? Um, an average time would probably be around seven to nine minutes. Well, a fast time would be six or five. That would be really fast. Yes. Six or five? That'd be like rolling. Yeah, that would be really, really good. Um, and uh, also, if like you have any uh, advice for newer teams who are just trying to scrim this match and get ready for their uh, round eight, uh, round of eight game, like if I'm the steel level and I'm like eighth seed and I've made it this far, I'm probably not sure what I'm doing, right? So, um, I know this is a big thing in lower divisions. Do not uber your heavy, uber your demo. Your demo can actually move if they run away. Teams so have been uber doing that less, uh, as, as so far as I've seen. Yeah, in the last few seasons, it's been the changing. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what what is different between a few seasons ago and now. It's we Uber demos nowadays instead of the heavy. Yeah, he, he almost he's there to get uh, flashed. It looks like sometimes. He, yeah, he's there for support in just case we need to back up or if we need to like kill things faster. He's there with us. Right. Okay, uh, that's all the questions I have for Badwater. You have anything else you wanna you wanna add to that? Um. Not really. Sweet. Cool. Sweet, sweet. DJ. Well, yeah, we're we're approaching uh, the hour mark. So, DJ, you had collected a few questions from our from our audience. Question time. Question time. Yeah. No. Okay. That where's, was my, where's my musical cue for that. I tried. Do, 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 I tried. Question I time. So that's more intense. Well, question time is a time of relaxation. No. <laughs> no. Hell no. We're gonna hype no, that. That's we're that's gonna hype that. Let's go. It's question cool. time. Oh, it's question time. No. <laughs> okay. Let's get into this. Uh, fix and see. Fix and see. It's like fancy with an X. Has two questions. Uh, he says, I am new to the competitive scene, but I have a lot of experience and time playing TF2. Well, that's one question. How do I get involved with this team? Um, 
Like, what's the best way? Like, a lot of people would say go to the UGC forums, but is there a better way? Like, he's not new to the TF2, so is there some other kind of way that you would recommend or just UGC forums? Um, like, to get in with the TF2 community? Yeah. Um, I probably pugging is probably the best way to actually talk to people. Um, TF2 Center, I guess, is, is one little tiny thing you can do. Um, I don't know. I, I've, I've just been around the community so long. Like, a lot of people know me, and, like, I don't really have to introduce myself to most people because they just know that I've, I'm around. Yeah. But you just kind of okay. just have to do pugs and just play a long time. That's that's the only way. Unless you, like, are really popular, I don't know, like Star or something. Like, he wouldn't be that popular if it wasn't for his YouTube channel. Yeah. yeah. You gotta, oh, wow. And you watch all of our work. subscribers, like, leave the window now, mister. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. When, when you're when you're a new player and you're trying to get into the competitive scene, you have to do your research and you have to do your work. It just doesn't... You just don't fall into something unless you're incredibly lucky. You have to you have to open up your web browser, type g o o g l e dot com, hit press return, and then search for Team Fortress Two competitive and just look up as much resources as possible, and then just just investigate each each scene and see what feels comfortable to you. And if it doesn't work out, hey, no big deal. You can just try something else, like try another scene or try another pug house and join another community and try and. Just make some friends and ask questions. It's yep. um, it's all a process. Yep. Okay, that was G O O G. Okay. Google. Oh, Microsoft oh, owns why? it. Goggle. Are we going? Are we going to Google dot com? Google. To see the world, I guess. Yeah. Um. Okay. Any any okay. other questions in there? Yeah, we got a number of questions. An excellent question week this week. It was. Uh, we got. A... What? It was sick. That's sick. Sick. As I said, thick. sick. Thick. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> we have a question from Christian1210. I want to be a sniper or a pyro main when I get into the competitive environment. What other classes should I make sure I perform well in in order to perform well in those two classes? Like, a lot of people will say, uh, if you want to play spy, get good at other classes so that you know what to be looking out for. Or if you want to play other classes, you should play everything else so that you know how everything goes. I don't know. What would you say, what would you guys or in general recommend for someone who wants to play sniper or pyro? I know the universal class, like classes, soldier and scout, like they can transfer to every other class by like hit scan and projectile. Yeah, you know, like MGE is based like is the only way to train or pubbing with those two classes because they transfer to every class. Like sniper is scout. Like if you train scout, you're good with aiming, and sniper is all aiming. Or spy revolver. I mean, spy is more like game sense related, but yeah. I mean revolver is a little bit you know both both things, but. Spy is yeah. a cocktail of a lot of experience of different classes because yeah. you you, mm-hmm. you have to understand how each class behaves and what their movement is like and you have to understand what their HP is like and how they kind of will juke back and forth and yeah I agree with I agree with the sniper analogy with scout yep mm-hmm. we've got some good advice there uh, the next question is from Bean how did how did your experiences in in gold as spy last season shape your spy awareness as medic. Uh, um, I I think it's the other way around. My medic, just because I've played medic so much, I'm so good at spy because I can understand like what the combo's thinking at this certain time. Like, are they looking for a spy oh, or okay. or something like that? So like because I played medic previous seasons, it's helped me on spy. Fair enough, makes sense. Uh, we've got a couple more questions from Bean. The next one is. <clears throat> What are good ways to develop your medic skills specifically? Um, I guess play other classes. I mean, you can't really train yeah. medic in a, in a pub. Yeah. So, like, learning That's all the true. other classes and what they can do at certain times is really helpful. And, like, if you should be scared of this class at this certain time because they can do this thing. Or, like, you can walk into this group of people because they won't shoot you because you know what they can do or not do. Right, cool. right, makes sense. Um, next question from Bean is how essential to surviving has been uh, surfing as a medic? 
Um, I I don't think surfing really affects that much in competitive. I mean, like you may like jump from a rock. You may use a rocket to to jump from like once or twice in a game. Mm. So, like even though I I personally surf quite a bit in this game, and like I really don't see like much of a difference. Like I I mean like my movement may be great because of it, or like my my strafes may be really good, but like it's mostly positioning and what you do at certain times, other than how well can you strafe. I guess it's like our fault for like every time we see someone surf uh, amazingly well, we get all excited and, and super psyched and, and pumped, especially medics who like surf away from the from the danger uh, yeah. when you're covering a game that's really fun to watch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I guess we I guess we're to blame for for that hypeness. Yeah, that's that's why the tip of the hats, for example, like I don't know why I know that the surfing part of it was so hyped up and. I don't really know why because it's just surfing. I know well, from I think experience, not that many like people. There, surfing's right? pretty cool though. <laughs> yeah, there are guys who do TF2 streams who do nothing but surf, and they get reasonable numbers for a TF2 stream. So. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I'm not trying to be jealous, but whenever I stream, I don't get any viewers. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll pop on your stream like tonight and curl, tonight and curl up with a hundred Capri Suns and <laughs> watch your watch your show. <laughs> Right, someone was saying that like once or twice. Yeah. I was like, what and is this about? Yeah, it must then be a stream Capri Suns. About, like, yeah, then they're talking about falling asleep. Uh, with is that an inside joke four or four with Capri Suns? I have no idea. Yeah, that was oh, okay. Bean. He's been he makes jokes every stream. What a card he is. <laughs> <laughs> what a card. Oh. What a card. Uh next question we have is from DJ Axes. What he was he says, uh what would you say is the well this is kind of silly, but We'll, we'll see what your opinion on it is. What is the main role of the medic in Highlander? Like, in general, not sp situationally, like, overall. Um, just to... Medic's probably the most important class, because if there isn't a medic, what would be a TF2? It, it, like, Uber, Uber is basically what defines TF2, like, Uber Advantage, and who has Uber at this certain time. So, and if, if the medic dies... It is never alive the whole time. It's obvious that the other team is going to win because they always have the uber advantage. Being invulnerable for that eight seconds is really important. Yep. Yep. Okay. So we've got uh, a couple more questions. Yeah, here we go. Cool. We got the time for it. Go for it. Okay. We've got a question from Hildreth, our good friend Hildreth. Uh, it's a, it wants to know what your opinion is on the quick fix. Um, overall, not like third point bad water. Or it's specifically you kind of answered like, it earlier, right? Overall. Yeah, it's it's easily counterable by crits. But we kind of the NA scene has definitely noticed that when it was played in sixes a lot, when it was first like unbanned, like it it count uh, crits was the hard counter for for a quick fix. So like, if there are other teams using crits, like don't ever switch to quick fix. It's bad. It's not a good idea. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool. Um, we do have a question from Just a Ducks. Uh, wants to know. This is a question we get almost every week, but I like hearing the answers from the different guests because it's a different opinion, generally the same, but different little tidbits to it. Mm -hmm. Just a Ducks says, "What's the difference between gold and plat skill wise, and is the increase in invite players helping or hurting the plat scene?" Um, a lot here. I'd say the influx of invite players has helped it just to make it more competitive because Highlander is usually known as like the goof around. It's not sixes, so it's just have fun. But now it, I think it's turned more into serious, like competitive play. Um, the difference between gold and and platinum, I think, it's just be the combos. Like the snipers may be the same in gold and platinum, but it's always how the combos change the game. How, what I've seen is how they're a lot slower, like they're slow of like reacting, like what to do in this situation, and then like it, and they never push off of uber advantage, and like whenever they have uber advantage, they they sit back and do nothing, or I don't know, it's they're just I feel like they're slower, like they don't take they don't yeah. take advantages more, right? Is a way to put it. All right, that probably that just comes with experience, right? 
Same yeah. Idea there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Game um, well, is that is that it for questions, or do we have one more? Let we me have, see. We, we have do one more if we have one more. Yeah, uh, I picked up one more while we were asking. Best part of the show. While we were answering sure. them. Go okay. Uh, this question is from Sales Aways. Love the plurals. Uh, what player in plat do you fear most when you're playing medic? It's not necessarily a player. It's a class. I fear the sniper a lot. Um, I'm always scared of sniper sightlines. I'm my, yeah. as, like our combo is scared of sniper sightlines because every sniper in platinum right now hits their shots. So it, there's not one person on sniper right. that we're not scared of. I mean, like it's nice. It's nice when we're playing against GC and JJK is ringing for Max. We don't have to be as scared as Max yeah. hitting every single shot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks, Seals Aways, for the nice questions. Yeah. We got some excellent Sick. questions this week. Thanks, guys, for leaving them in the chat box. Uh, make sure just whenever you think of them, every week, leave them there. Uh, that's all we have for this week, though. So I think well, it's that's not, time that's not for quite that. all we have for this week. <gasps> well, we now he's on to the best parts of the show. The best Ooh. part of the show. Uh, we've got a really special performance uh, for you. Oh. Your... It's not really a performance. It's, it's like a, a super performance. I'm just going to play like a few notes. Like, yeah, now it's time to, to get, get to know our guests, and we're going to learn about uh, 404's special hidden talent. Special talent. Uh, Thing everyone I'm, I'm, I'm wants I'm going to take my headset today. off. I'm going to take my headset okay. off. All right. Okay, go for it. Wow, go God, you got to get a little of his shirt. <laughs> he dropped <laughs> it. so bad <laughs> on him. <clears throat> just kidding. Oh, <laughs> That was mean, Gold. All right, are you no, ready? he's back. He's back. He's back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in, okay. I might need to warm up. Totally ready. Did you uh, empty your spit valve? I don't have a spit valve. No, that's Ooh. brass. Oh, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna play a few notes. And I'll... Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, it. Okay, if someone doesn't make a frag video with that in it by like the end of this week, I'm gonna be really, really disappointed in you all. I'll probably put that in a recap of uh, <laughs> when we're done with the seasons nine and out. There you go. And by the oh, way, yeah. while you're while you were gone, you put your headset down. I said your shirt was tacky. It's really not. I like it. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, I love your tie. Oh, thanks. The, <laughs> the subsequent <laughs> middle and the lightness of it was crazy. Anyway, that is uh, the end of the show today. I've got to go, like, run off to go somewhere tonight. Uh, and you do too, right, Cold? Yes, I've got to get out of here. Yep. Uh, make sure to tune in Thursday, which I'm pretty there will be a live game. Uh, Thursday, and as always, there'll be a game on Monday, and you can always come back here in about 128 hours, make that 127 hours, uh, for another night and out. Uh, next week's guest, not decided yet, but we will let you guys know uh, for the semifinals, and for now, uh, we'll out there we go. yes, signing, oh yeah, we should talk to Argo. Hey, uh, hey Argo! Hey, Argo! Do you, know, do you guys know JJK is my dad and Akuma's my Asian brother? I didn't really? know that. I like it. That yeah, make- I, just, I just want everybody to know. Does <laughs> it make Huey your cousin? Uh, no, I don't have any other family. It's just JJK is my dad and Kuma's my Chinaman brother. Sweet. Oh, cool. That's all. That's all you need to know. Mm. Okay. Cool. And uh, on that <laughs> uh, exciting and helpful note, uh, I think we will cut off right here. Thanks. Good night. Goodbye. Yeah. Ow.